Hi everybody, welcome to Fast Home Brew. Today I'm using a fresh work kit to make an American Pale from the All In Brewery. I've done this a couple of times before and it's super duper easy. So I'm going to take us through everything. So this is the box. Inside that box is a bladder. It's a picture of a monkey and some instructions that talk about the sort of uh, molten hops that are in there, tells you the current gravity and has some suggestions for what yeast and dry hops to use. So let's get into this thing. No. Let's clean all my things. So, this is my cleaning routine beforehand. Um, like I said, because it's so easy, I'm going to go into a lot of detail. So, that is sodium percarbonate, just pure sodium percarbonate from the homebrew store. I'm um, using 10 grams a litre, and I'm just washing the fermenter and, you know, the tap and the spoon, anything that's going to come into contact with the wort. And this is me rinsing it in hot water. After that, it gets sanitized. So, first step is clean, then sanitized. This is star sand. You're going to need like one and a half grams per liter of this stuff or something like that. One and a half mils per liter. And so that's the tap going in, sanitizing the spoon. And the whole fermenter gets a shake around to make sure that there's stuff on everything. So that's all clean and sanitary. Now, um, let's talk about this thing a bit as I sort of struggle to open it. It's a handle over there and this is the side with the spout. But, so what is a fresh wet kit? Well, these guys at the All In Brewing Company, as far as I know, um, when they brew a batch of beer, some of it goes into kegs, some of it goes into cans, some of it goes into these things. So you're getting the actual beer from the brewery uh, in a sort of slightly concentrated form. And that's the spout there that you can see. So... Um, it is the actual beer and all you need to do is top it up with five liters there's 15 liters in that thing and um the that's about it really <laughs> the um they give a couple of suggestions of how to get these things in but i'm just picking up by the handle you saw at the back uh i i pinched off the bladder for as well as i could there well i turn it upside down and now it's all just Draining into the fermenter up to the 15 later mark, hopefully. And now I'm trying to get the last bit out, but the, actually the bag's uh, there's still a bit too much in it, so the bag's too thick at the bottom. So now I should be able to get the whole thing out. Out, out it comes. And uh, I guess I'll give the box to the kids for, to play with. In fact, they turned it into part of their kitchen. It is a stove now, apparently. But anyway, a pretend stove, obviously. A real stove would catch fire. So I'm staring at it now, and this is the top up. Like I said, um, it needs five liters of water, so that's three plus less than two. Because uh, as you'll see in a minute, I'm going to add some water when I um, when I bottle. Uh, USO five yeast. Some of the other suggestions were um, Bry ninety seven, Y yeast one hundred five six. So that's all good and. Ah, yes, this is just me being a little bit precious because it's very bright outside. So I don't want any UV getting into my beer there as I run it furiously up to the shed. Um, only a light one, this one. And that's the heat belt going on, which won't be needed in the middle of summer. Uh, temperature probe. And that is going to get all connected up. So that's probably the ambient temperature we're seeing then at the temperature of the brew. The actual brew is about the right temperature. So that'll ferment at sort of 19 to 20 degrees for a couple of weeks. And um, halfway through, we're going to dry hop. So here I am on dry hopping day and I've got my little sample jar. And as we know, the first sample lies. So I'll just, oh, I guess I'll have a little sip. Tastes pretty good. Chuck the rest out. This is, so the, the bit in the tap I'm not interested in. That's the first bit that comes out. But this bit came out properly. So let's see how we're going old ferment wise this is at um let's see it's somewhere between oh i can't remember so one and 1.01 so that's good that means it must have just about finished now i'm going to boil this grain bag for grain bag hop bag for 15 minutes uh, just to sanitize it before it gets dry hopped and going in now we're adding um amarillo and simcoe it said to put in 25 grams of each but i'm gonna add 40 because that's about four grams a liter which is sort of a good sort of a generous amount for an american pale ale but that's i like to be generous with my dry hops and also i remember when i made their um uh ipa the leg breaker 
I thought at the time that I could have easily doubled the amount of hops that I put in. So they suggested 50 grams in total. I've used 80 grams in total, which is a little bit more. Now this will go up to the shed again. Max is running around trying to trip me up. And I will gently as possible, and I'm trying to touch as least as possible with my grab your hands, put that in. And so that's, um, I must be four or five days before bottling day now, because that's about the right timing for this. So here are our bottling day. Now this water here is the extra water I was talking about before that is going to top me up to 20 litres. Before there was only 19 and a half litres in there. And what I'm doing here is what you call bulk priming, where, so instead of using carbonation drops, that is all my sugar getting mixed in in one hit. And that, when that dissolves, I'll put that back on the stove and boil that for 15 minutes again, just to kill any bugs, and then add that. So now, you can't see it that well, but the it's transferring from my fermenter, which is that one, into the bottling bucket below. And as you saw, I put all the sugar in, so all the sugar will be mixed into it instead of adding carbonation drops to the bottle, the sugar's already mixed in. That was me squeezing the hot bag. This is me. Uh, recycling the yeast so I I'm gonna use this yeast again in I don't know a couple of brews time so I'm just um, just putting it into these little jars and so that they've obviously been cleaned and sanitized as well then those jars will go into the fridge um, you know sometimes you see me holding a jar of sludge up at the end of my videos that's where they come from they come from bottling day okay and this is the boring bit everybody knows how to do this this must be one of the last bottles I'm just tipping Last bit out there. Looks quite clear. So the squeezing of the old hop bag there uh, obviously adds some cloudiness sometimes, but I like the flavor. But anyway, here's the bottling. Much more civilized than the last time. And that's all done. Good. Okay, cool. Well, there we go. Fresh work kit. Made a really long video out of a really, really easy process. But um, yeah, that's, I mean, it, it's a guarantee here. And I got this over Christmas where I didn't know if I would have time to do a brew. I sort of hope for a half an hour. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Bye. Yeah, I wonder what's outside the... Oh, what have we here? Well, look at that. This is the real thing ordered from the brewery at great expense. This will come in very handy on tasting day. Yes.